on mm -hmm. February 27th. Um, in order to do that, we needed to, um, I sat with district administration, we went over the job description, they decided to add duties, um, plus I included the ones that the employee had already been doing. So in this case, it's a reclassification due to a gradual accretion of duties as per ed code mm -hmm. that the employee had been doing. Yeah. So it's the salary that you see there, it's specifically pinpointed to the employee that was reclassified. In the future, should this employee not hold that position anymore, you have the, the right to direct administration, yes, we want to fill it with the new job description because we want the replacement to do everything, uh, the same duties, or to just send it to office assistant or administrative assistant, whatever you decide. But for right now, this employee, bless you, bless you. for right now, this employee has had um, a gradual accretion of duties that, of, that are of a permanent nature yeah. and not temporary. Yeah, and, and, I, and I wish we would be doing this in a two-step two fold, not on, the, not on the same night, because then it's convoluted. Um, the because, I, I, I mean, I know that there's other people out there that would like to apply for the position, but they can't. They because can't because the employee has the been doing those. Yeah. And that's where the personnel commission um, prefers that reclassifications are not made because um, people do not compete for it. Mm -hmm. Nevertheless, an employee has been asked to do those duties for more than two years. Yeah. So but, but I, I see your point. But a reclassification is a something when the job already exists, that title already exists. We're talking about two and different things. This is a reclassification for an employee. Yes, but it, the, the when the employee submitted for a reclass, this title did not exist. So Correct. what are you reclassifying to? What are you? What we are you print comparing? the job description. It's an accretion of duties, and I understand yes. that. Yes, and then but I that's do. That's why it should have been a twofold. What do you mean a twofold? A twofold. That I do created, at the commission level. Created the position so that when the reclassification would act, the duties of the reclassification would have matched the title, then that's the, that's the correct title for that position to I can see you thinking that, but that's not the way the commission works. We have to look out for the best interest of the employee, and at that point, I sit down with the employee and say, let's look at your job description. What are you doing? What has been an accretion? And it's of no fault to the employee that they had been asked to do the additional duties. And nobody's saying it's a f no fault. It's just, what do you compare it to? I do and a job no analysis. I do a job analysis. Not, yeah, um, I, I can go to your office and talk about this. Yes, but, anytime. But um, anyways, I so I am in full support of this. Don't worry. <laughs> I just, the steps of this is, doesn't make sense. So Ms. Duarte, one more thing. The amount, it is the different from the current employee that is going yes. to be reclassified. Okay. Thank you, Esther. You're welcome. Thank you. Any further questions? None. Seeing none. Uh, Ms. Ms. Go mm. ahead. I would like to table this item. I second. Uh, we already have a motion on the on the on the table. We do. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'll make the motion then. I make the, the motion, motion to table. Well, there's already a motion on the table. But by the Lobelton rules, the motion and you second, can, you that can request, that's for the Bolong excuse State, everybody, me, anybody can excuse be amended. Excuse me, Mr. Kim. Yes. I, there's a motion on the table. If if um, if there is an anybody, if the motion maker or the second maker wishes to withdraw, do you wish to withdraw your well second? Well, actually, my motion was for discussion. Okay. So then let's finish the discussion then, and then we'll go forward. Okay. So, discussion has ended. We'll go to adoption of job description and salary schedule placement. Is there a motion to approve? So moved. Is there a second? Motion dies for lack of a second. Is there a the second motion, motion? Make the motion to table it. Motion to table by Mr. Kim. I will second that. Seconded by Mr. Calderon. Any discussion? Okay. 
Yeah, I, I still believe that uh, we're supposed to look into a different way to bring the more personnel to the departments. All the school district right now is uh, short of hands. And we have a elementary school, 35 students in the classroom. That's ridiculous. Even the Mexicali, 23, 25. That's it. And the Central, 23, 24. What happened to us? We increasing, start increasing everybody's salaries. Is and then we uh, cut the personnel. Mr. Calderon? I am not in, uh, I am not against people making or getting paid for what they do. And, uh, and that's not the idea here. However, I just, I just would like more information on this on, on the, and how it went about, just like they, they did it with the HR we went to the uh, we went to the table about three times for that position, so I would like to do the same thing. Like I said, I'm not I'm not against giving people a raise if they deserve it or if they're doing the job that they're doing. However, uh, once again, uh, if we are going to do this, we need to be fully informed. That's it. That's my only that's my only uh, request. Ms. Duarte, all right. We already said what I had to say. Ms. Um, I agree with Mr. Calderon. It's just needing more, more information. Okay. So if there's a motion to table by Mr. Kim, seconded by Mr. Calderon. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 No. Motion passes for one. I would ask um, district staff to provide the information requested by the board members. I didn't. Item G3, Ms. Donaldson. Good evening, board members. <coughs> Excuse me. This item um, is the TRAN resolution um, which authorizes Calexico Unified School District administration to apply for TRAN issuance uh, for $4 million for the 2012-13 fiscal year. What this um, TRAN will allow the district as we're projecting to be negative approximately $4 million cash in May um, as it is provided on your cash flows. Um, and I've been talking about this for the past three months that we were going to go out for a TRAN because of our um, cash flow um, deficiencies in May of 2013 and this is the resolution that will allow us to pursue the TRAN. Um, currently uh, the timeline is looking um, that um, we will have the funds available to us mid um, April so that we are able to meet our payroll obligations uh, for the month of May and moving forward and all obligations um, for the month of May, which is where we're projected to be negative, approximately $4 million in cash. Um, I'm asking the board to approve this resolution as is, as it will be presented um, to the county. And, um, and it's looking like it's going to have a payback date um, of August 30th of 2013. Are there any questions? Mr. Kim? Yeah, uh, still, first of all, I believe $4 million uh, in April, middle of April. The April, we're going to have a property tax coming in, and we're going to have a sales tax clean up uh, coming in. We're going to have a, a chunk of the money comes in anyways. And I don't know why we have to do this. And even we short the money, we, it's, a, it's a $4 million. Yeah, so we can have some deferred payments, and we can do some kind of a uh, short, uh, bor short term borrowing from the uh, bank. We don't have to go through the, this, uh, this, this uh, trans loan. And second, uh, the, the second uh, what I'm hesitating is that we bring the CFW again. And the, these are the CFWs who sue the other school district and with the uh, bond doing, uh, so mentioning like at uh, $3.7 million, we ha they end up to pay $43 million. And uh, former CCR lawyers, Yuri Calderon, working down there. Why we still keep bringing the same person and same company, the same groups to bring in uh, without any 
uh, proper uh, the region, and also very uh, negative with the impact we had uh, from the the, uh, the history of the district. But first of all, we don't need. I don't believe that we need to have a trans loan this time. We can have uh, some deferred payments, and uh, we can get uh, some. If we really need a short uh, borrowing from the bank, I think it's more faster than the we can do taking care of this one without any uh, extra cost. Thank you, Mr. Kim. Mr. Calderon? Are you sure we're going to run out of money? I'm pretty sure. You're sure? I'm pretty sure. And Boom. if you, and on, if on the cash flow, it's projected to include property taxes that we receive in April um, and our projected spending throughout the year. So I'm pretty sure we're going to be negative cash, $4 million in, in May. So, and I read here somewhere, I read here that we're not gonna, we're gonna, we're not going to pay anything more than $10,000 in uh, taxes. That's interest. In interest, that's the interest so, on the trend. That's okay. correct, and that's, and that's typical. Okay. Because it so is no a short, it is a short term borrowing so and. That we get paid and we pay it back. That is correct, that is the interest payment. And okay. just so that the board is aware, there is a cost associated with well, a interest. TRAN. Yes. It takes you know effort and time for the preparers of the TRAN and it's typical. Our previous firm, which was Piper Jaffrey, um, there, there was a, a cost associated with that and as a matter of fact, the cost was, um, I think it was about it was close to $19,000 is what it cost for the for Piper Jaffrey, the previous firm, to um, secure a TRAN for the district. Um, uh, CFW's cost is $15,000 for the TRAN, so there is some savings there. In addition to the cost for our ratings and other all of the mechanisms in place for the TRAN. So the district has um, reviewed those documents and it's my recommendation to approve this resolution. And why CFW? Well, we currently have a contract with CFW, and these are services that they perform um, as far as TRAN work. So it just made more sense to, to use CFW because we have a contract with them. And this, the fees are significant. You know, they're less than what we would pay the other firm or what we've already paid the other form, uh, firm uh, for a TRAN. Is this con when when was this contract signed, or was it before? Um, I can't remember pinpoint a specific date, but I believe it was in October, in October. of 2012. Okay, mm -hmm. so so they're charging what 15,000 or something like that? Is that what you're saying? The cost is 15,000 dollars. And that's it. There's no more. There's when, when for that I, for th for the. For their trans services, yes, it's $15,000, and then there's a, a ratings fee. That's to a different company. It's called Standard & Poor's, and that's for the rating so that we can secure the TRAN. It's a, it's a credit rating, so it's our district's credit rating. So those are the fees associated with this TRAN, well, and there will be an interest payment, but which I'm is separate not, as well. I'm not going to see another bill from CFW other than this, the 15000 Not something. to exceed $15,000 for the TRAN, no. Yeah. I have a question. Okay. You said we have a, a CFW August contract with them? No, I said October, but yes. October or August? Mm -hmm. I believe it's, I said I couldn't be specific, okay. but I we believe it's August October. Okay, we have August with the CFW with the uh, card, uh, was a card uh, was called the uh, finance, refinance it. That is rejected, so they resend it. So contract is no, no existed with the CFW. Those are two separate items. Okay. Uh, no, no. Because she said we have, we have a contract with CFW. I'm, con I'm talking about that. And we do. Okay. So that contract should be uh, should be d deleted because that uh, that uh, the cop uh, uh, cop the was called the refinancing is rescinded by the county. Is that the subject? You are correct, okay. Mr. Kim. And that then we have October. Excuse me, Mr. Cop. Kim. You know, y you don't have to raise your voice, please. Kay. Correct. For for the cops, you're absolutely right. That was voted um, down by the board. But this contract, I believe it was in October, was for um, many services that the board approved in October. For October CFW. only for the swimming pool, JPA. Um, yes. Okay. Well, I, I'd be happy to review that, but it's my understanding that that yeah, contract that's October, October, in October is, some October is, for is the inclusive swimming pool of trans for the JPA. services. Mr. Stuarte? Um, so we don't have a, uh, uh, we don't have a. Mr. Uh, Kim, you had your opportunity to speak. It's now Mrs. Duarte's turn, please. Thank you. Okay. Mr. Kim was. Um, well, cover up. Mr. Kim was stating uh, we get local property tax in April. Yes. Um, 
I'm looking mm -hmm. at your budget report here, and if I'm reading the line correctly, it's two million seven hundred fifty-five thousand. That is which correct. Which is not close to four thousand for payroll. Four million and four million for yes, payroll. Yes, that is correct. And as a part, the the natural progression of it, it you know, it talks about revenues on the top and expenditures on the bottom. Those revenues for property taxes are already included. So without the trend. So even with the property taxes, we're still looking at a negative $4 million in cash. Okay. And I believe that <clears throat> at the, I think it was last city meeting, um, there was a waiver for neighborhood house. So if we continue to give waivers to businesses that pay taxes into the school district, we're never going to make money because the taxes are not being paid into this district. So um, – I believe we have a board member that sits in the council that made the motion to waive the fees, therefore not getting any money into the district. Um, but other other than that, um, I have um, for the trend because it's a needed every every year every school district at the end of the year needs the trend. That's correct, and sometimes it's uh, multiple times. It, and it's only going to cost us ten thousand for the. That's the interest payment. The interest. That's the interest. It's yeah, going to cost us the fifteen thousand dollar fee, the and Plus then the fifty. Then. I think it's fifty eight hundred dollars for the rating, yes. and. Okay. But there's always a, a fee associated with borrowing, and this is a short term borrowing loan. So. When do we get the money? We should have it mid April. And when do we pay it back? By August the thirtieth. Miss Zuno Vizcarra. No, they were all addressed. Thank you. Okay. Is there a motion to approve resolution? Wait, there's a comment. Is there a comment? I don't have an item for you. It was it on the previous one? Okay. All right. Yeah, well, you put it as a public comment, but uh, okay, that's fine. Go, come on up. That's fine. Go ahead. All right. Good evening for the third time. Uh, my name is Raul Ureña, and I'm a sophomore at Calexico High School, and I'm, I'm a bit confused with this trend loan. Uh, isn't everything fine and dandy here in the school district? I mean, every year, um, from what I've experienced, uh, it's the same song. Lavish spending on just about everything, waste uh, $30,000 extra without any discretion on, on a human resource uh, director. We, um, there's a lot of s unneeded spending. And then all of a sudden, uh, somewhere around this time of year, the sky is falling, and uh, for some reason we need a loan. So we, uh, last year it was, um, I believe the deficit was $6 million, and supposedly the state was coming and they were going to take all their stuff, and, and we needed this loan. We desperately needed it. Uh, so, and you use the same excuse. We don't have the payroll money. So, um, is this the same thing that's happening this year? Do we really need it? Don't we have reserves, or can we get a, a loan from somewhere else, a cheaper loan maybe? I mean, uh, I don't know how much our reserves are, 20 million, somewhere around there. Um, maybe it would, it would the reserves is for emergencies. Maybe if we could use that money for this emergency, uh, that, would be, that would be a much better option than going around and, ask and uh, wasting money on stuff we don't need. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Jordan. Do we have reserves? Twenty million. I wish we had twenty million dollars of reserve, um, and I'm in my in the next. Um, I have a board presentation, but I would like to just clarify that um, there that there is a difference between budget and cash, and and that's where I I think there always is a little bit of confusion. Um, this is a cash issue. It's not a budget issue or a reserve issue. It's just in cash because of the deferrals from the state of California, and. We've been fortunate to receive the July, August, September, March uh, deferral waiver for this year. However, 
with the creation of the EPA, which I'll get into in my presentation next, but um, this is just a cash issue. It's just having all to do with cash flow, not budget. And we do have a, a, a reserve, um, but this is just, like I said, in regard to cash. Thank you. But uh, Thank you. But we're going to have spent $7.4 million for the lawyer consulting this year, 10% of our budget revenue. And how we we spending? We gonna now we gonna we gonna borrow the money? Something wrong with our spending? Ten percent of the revenue we gonna spend for the lawyer consulting this year? Did you have a question, Mrs. Duarte? Just a suggestion for our board retreat. Um, a, a little explanation as to the difference between budget and cash. Is there a motion to approve the resolution authorizing CUSG to apply for a trend issuance for four million for the 2012-13 fiscal year? So moved. Motion by Duarte. Is there a second? Second. <coughs> second by Suno Vizcarra. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Roll call. <coughs> I I'm roll sorry. Call. Roll call. <coughs> Aguilar, aye. Calderon, aye. Duarte? Aye. Kim? No. Vizcarra? Aye. Motion passes 4 1. Item G 4. Can we take a five minute recess? Thank you.
If we could take our seats, please, and so we can resume the meeting. Is that is that crazy, like Rosa? We'll resume our meeting at uh, seven fifty nine, Ms. Randall. Item G4, approval of 2012-2013 second interim report. Ms. Donaldson. Okay. Good evening, board members. I am here to um, present to you the 2012-2013 Calexico Unified School District second interim report. Second interim. Um, it's one of three annual financial reports. It reports actual financial results through January 31st and projections through 2013-14 fiscal year. Uh, it's key to determining the district's fiscal viability. The components of the second interim report. We have the Form 01, which represents the general fund, unrestricted and restricted. Form CI which is the signed district certification um, and what that does it it just confirms the how the district certifies itself form AI is the average daily attendance form 
Form RLI, the Revenue Limit Summary, Form Cash, the Cash Flow Summary, MYP, the Multi-Year Projections, and Form SEMAI, which is the Special Education Maintenance of Effort. Some of the information or the majority of the information in preparing this budget comes from guidance from the Imperial County Office of Education, from the California Department of Education, School Services of California, and other related professional services like AXA or CASBO. As a part of second interim, we're updating the budget to include the latest and greatest information from the, those previous um, um, guidance sources. Routine for second interim budget adjustments, we update the categorical revenue, we update income restricted and unrestricted, we update projected expenditures, and we update salaries and benefits. In the 2012-13 second interim, these were some of the adjustments that were made. In the unrestricted for revenues, the revenue limit deficit factor was 22.272%. It reflects COLA of 3.24%, which is unfunded because of the deficit. $1.3 million increase to revenue due to receiving one-time FEMA funds of that $1.3 million. The district received $320,000 of one-time Cal EMA funds. The district, the increase to revenue also included $300,000 um, in the IID LEAP grant funds. The district received $500,000 in ERRP funds, and again, those are one-time funds. There was a $25,000 increase to the mandated block, excuse me, the, the mandated costs funds. And there was also, a, and, and there was a decrease in, re, in revenue limit funding of $229,000. As well as the district is, has included the continual um, categorical flexibility to sweep into the unrestricted general fund. In restricted revenue, there was a $1.2 million increase due to those program impo improvement funds. And again, that's a one-time increase. There was a $28,000 increase due in our EIA entitlement, so that's also reflected in the budget. There was an increase in lottery funds of $135,000. There was an increase in $480,000 due to the RDA pass-through funds. $34,000 increase due to mental health entitlements. There was a $56,000 decrease in QEIA carryover. $10,000 decrease in ACES entitlements, and $31,500 decrease in ag grant entitlements in the current year. The district is deficit spending in its restricted revenues in the EIA funding. There's approximately $4.93 million of carryover that the district needs to spend, and in other resources, there is prior year carryover, which would um, which would make for deficit spending in other categorical programs. In the expenditure adjustments for second interim, the unrestricted and restricted have increased expenditures by $3.6 million from first interim. Some of the reasons, reemployment of staff, we budgeted the program improvement funds of $1.2 million, additional assignments, additional hours, and the associated statutory benefits. There was an insurance premium rate increase effective January 1st, 2013. There has been equipment purchases district-wide, and we also budgeted the continued facilities and construction projects, and there was also um, budgeted the reduction of the indirect cost rate to 4.37%. The projected net loss for the 
Uh oh, that should, I'm sorry, I didn't update the top of my slide. It should be 1213. Um, for the unrestricted at first interim, we were projecting to um, the net loss to ending fund balance of 572,118. And at second interim, that has decreased to 499,454. The projected unrestricted ending fund balance at June 30 is a little over $10 million. And of that, 3% mandatory reserve is $2.48 million. The multi-year projections. What those are, there are they are three-year projections and it, they're presented through June 30th of 2015. What's inclusive in the projections are current variables and assumptions as directed by ICOE and those other um, institutions that provide the district with budget information. And the multi-year projections are also based on the governor's January proposed budget for the 2012-13 budget. In the multi-year projections, the district takes into consideration the effective revenue limit COLA, the projected ADA, the dollars per ADA. And in this chart, um, for 12-13, um, there's a 3.24% COLA, it's unfunded. Our projected ADA is 8,885.41 and the dollar we receive per ADA is $5,220.73. That is an increase over the prior year, which was 11-12, of $56.16 per ADA. And on the chart, it shows um, that very same information. If you notice that in 12-13 and 13-14, the ADA is the same. And that is because the district has the option if for some reason in 1314 our ADA would decrease, we have the option to use our prior year P2 ADA. Also inclusive in the multi-year projections. Again, there's the continued tier three categorical sweeps. And it's just to be noted that it's, we're gonna have flat funding and there is no additional revenue, so no new revenue. There is an increase to lottery funds. For unrestricted, it's $124 per ADA, and for restricted, $30 per ADA. There is a 5.1% cut to the federal funds due to possible federal sequestration in 2013-14 and 14-15. There is the removal of the QEIA funds for 2014-15, also inclusive in the multi-year projections is the restoration of sports programs in our junior high schools, the reduction in categorical carryover. There are assumptions regarding salary and benefits, which would include um, step and column increases. Still in our multi-year, there is approximately 23% deficit to the revenue limit funding, which equates to about $13.2 million less the district will receive. And also inclusive in our multi-year projection is a district-operated adult education. The unrestricted ending fund balance for the current year and the two out years, the district is projecting that we'll have an excess of $10 million as our ending fund balance for 2013. There will be some deficit spending, um, and at June 30 of 2014, we're projecting $9.5 million ending fund balance unrestricted, and um, further deficit spending through June 2015 with an ending fund balance projected at $6.6 .6 .6 million. And on that chart, it also shows what the, re what the required 3% reserve represents of, excuse me, of those dollar amounts the cash flow. Our cash flow balances have been updated through February of 2013. It's inclusive of the waivers that we received in the current fiscal year for the July, August, October, and March deferral waiver in cash. In the 2012-13, 
uh, fiscal year, uh, the state of California created the Education Protection Account, which is the EPA. And what it does is it it takes a it means that the school district receives a lower portion of the percentages on a monthly basis, and it's received in a lump sum in June, which is contributing to our negative cash balance in May of 2013. As a part of the as a part of the EPA, the lump sum that we're scheduled to receive in June is 9.65 million dollars, which is why the TRAN borrowing is a is a necessity. The district certification. The district is self-certifying positive. A positive certification indicates that the district will be able to meet its financial obligations for the current year and the two subsequent fiscal years. I'd like to just briefly talk about our 2013-14 budget because it, all, it is all a part of our multi-year projection. I'd like to just make the board aware of, which I'm sure they already know, um, that for the first time in five years, education funding is going, is projected or sl slated to go up on a per student basis. Um, even slightly higher funding drives expectations to an unrealistic level, and there is no new money. However, passage of the Proposition 30, it did provide, provide some really good options for the district. We have an opportunity to restructure current programs, and it gives the district an opportunity to do a needs assessment as to how we're going to um, allocate, these, uh, allocate the funds available to the district. Also proposed in the governor's budget is the local control funding formula. The governor's proposed weighted student formula of 2012 um, has been reprised as the local control funding formula. What this formula does is, is it overhauls California's system of school finance. It replaces revenue limit funding and most categorical program funding. It, is, it establishes a unique funding target for every district based on its demographics, which is inclusive of their English, excuse me, English learner population, pupils eligible for free and reduced price meals, foster youth, current transportation and TIG, and K-3 and ninth grade class size reduction augmentations. It allows the district to be held harmless, which means the district will not receive less than what it's receiving in the current budget year. It's a restoration of the base revenue. Um, the governor honors a previous commitment to fund all existing K-12 revenue, revenue limit deficits and as I expressed earlier in the in the presentation we're looking at a 13 million dollar deficit in the current year cash deferrals currently approximately 45 percent of state aid payments owed to the school district were deferred to the following year that's not specific to us because we were fortunate enough to be a district to receive the cash deferral waivers. But there are, all, there are districts out there that um, are not as fortunate as us and the TRAN would be a lot, uh, a larger TRAN if that were our circumstance. Districts with significant property tax in income were not harmed as much and our district um, receives 8% of our total revenue limit funding from property taxes and the rest from the state. So these types of deferrals greatly affect our district. The governor is proposing the deferral buy down and it's one time for one year only. The governor estimates that at the end of 2013-14 there will be 5.6 billion dollars in deferrals to remain moving forward. This just kind of this next slide talks about the development process and the development of a school budget is a critical component of the district wide process. A school budget is often driven by allocation formula, contr contractual obligations, district wide policies and procedures, and school based initiatives. The process starts with school's enrollment projections and programmatic requirements. School administrators review the budget 
and work with various stakeholders while making decisions regarding staffing and resource allocations for the following year. The district awaits guidance from the county office for state compliance. And typically, uh, we receive that guidance um, for revisions to our current budget and um, guidance for the 13-14 for the budget in May from our school services um, May revise um, conference. The budget is then reviewed and approved by the Board of Education and any adjustments um, that need to be done typically take place in October once the actual enrollments are known. At this time, I'd like to um, ask the board for um, if they have any questions regarding the second interim. Thank you, Ms. Donaldson. Mr. Kim, do you have questions? First of all, I think the 2013 second interim adjustments, you're talking about the 56K decrease in QI carryover. What caused that? Well, it's um, what's, what's available to spend, um, as I had expressed in a, in a, um, I, I, in a previous um, meeting, was that there are certain criteria that we need to spend QEIA funds on. There can be some that's spent on salaries and benefits and um, on, uh, on training, those types of issues. So when revising and relooking at the budget, we needed to make a budget adjustment. It was an error in, the, um, in what was budgeted pr at first interim by $56,000. So which is? I believe the KIA program money they will receive out of five hundred thousand dollars. That is correct, and we in our current year that's that's fine. Th it, it was it has to do with the carryover. It's carryover. So yeah. So so it still was just the we're still thousand. receiving the in excess of five hundred thousand dollars in the current year for QEIA fund. Yes. But uh, the six fifty. The error was that the error was in the carryover. Okay. The prior year carryover. The regardless if we not uh, we not. Uh, Following the uh, KIA program, we gonna you sure you're gonna have a receive the money? I, yes, I've been in. It? That is correct. I've been in contact with the state because of um, our um, class sizes and things like that. It, that was definitely a concern of, of the board, and I did and of the staff, and I was in contact with the with CDE regarding and their specialist of QEIA, and um, we are entitled to the funds through 2013-14. And that's why it has been removed out of the 1415 budget. Then why we have a project, uh, page, page here, multi-year projection said removal of the QR fund for 2014-15. That is correct. Yes. Uh, what causing that uh, QR fund is removal? Well, because of our class sizes, we're not um, in compliance with QEIA. However, we are under the contractual limits. So we're losing the fund then? That is correct. Okay. So, actually, the we uh, like last time I told I uh, told the board, it uh, doesn't cost uh, nothing for us to keep the QI program. Now we don't, uh, we didn't do the QI program. Now we're losing the fund. Well, there is a cost associated with no. with running the program no. because we have to staff. Uh, it 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 requires lower class size, which means we'd mess. have to um, employ. Yes, but this one I think has a better mess on you board than made better than you, because uh, we have a eight hundred thousand dollars we are spending, and the five hundred thousand dollars from the uh, uh, program funding, but uh, we only three we only have to spend the extra three hundred thousand dollars, but three hundred thousand dollars is going to cover up by the what's called the K three grant re reduction because we increase the size of the K three, then we're going to receive less money for the K three grant. So actually, almost cost uh, zero for us to running the care program to for the two th uh, school thousand students. Well, I've I know we've um, had a presentation. I've done two presentations on QEIA and how yes. it relates to class size reduction. Mm -hmm. And um, I don't have my notes here, but I know I've done that presentation for the board already. Yes, the, it, the costs exceed and, and, and our exactly. No. It was a eight hundred thousand dollars for the cost for the thirteen. You're teachers. right for the previous board. Yes. That is correct. And no. then. 
the uh, calculation was almost nothing for us to keep the care programs. I don't believe that. That's not how I recollect it, but that's fine. That's what you not believe. It, what you not believe, but we can, we're going to lose ending over here losing the care program fund 2014-15 because we not keep the program. That's right. We're going to receive the funds in the current year and next year, and yeah, we're going not to not in 14-15. That is okay. correct. Okay. So that's that. That's that's benefit of the, our children's. Almost we don't have to spend almost nothing for the thousand students. Now we're going to lose that one. And 13 teachers out of the job too. Mr. Calderon. Thank you. And uh, we will be talking about QIA and classes reduction in the in, in the next couple of meetings. So, and we're going to do that. Um, here you s you talk about no new on this one mm -hmm. no new money but you talk about prop 30 provided opportunities and options so what do you mean by no new money but we have prop 30 so how did it benefit us the benefit to the district was we didn't lose 457 dollars per ada mm -hmm. when i say it's no new money well because we're deficited 20 percent well excuse me in excess of 22 percent mm -hmm. it really is no new money if you look at it we're still lacking prop even funded. with the passage of prop 30 13 million dollars for so this this school year for this school year and yes. what up okay what about next year well we're still looking at a deficit for next year so but prop 30 didn't help us for next year well it 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 didn't put the cut remember it's it's flat funding so we're still even at for next for this year next year and the following year we're still being funded at the 2007 8 levels oh. um so we are receiving no new money so it was just a uh, a means to try to keep us at 2007 8 when we're in 2012 13 so it is no additional new money and we're still short what they should give us by $13 million in the current year. But there's no loss on money. Well, with, there's, with well. Thir well, with 30, there's no loss. It's oh. a less loss. H how about that? We're, we're, if Proposition 30 wouldn't have passed, the district would have had to remove an additional $4.2 million out of mm -hmm. the current year budget. Okay. So because of the passage of Prop 30, so that didn't it happen. did not happen. And for next year? For next year, um, we're not looking at, at this particular point in time, we're not looking at a trigger cut, which is the $457 per ADA. And again, we'll receive that particular guidance probably in May um, uh, from school services. Okay, and one more question. Mm -hmm. You talk about, you also talk about how they give us a lump sum of in, in June. Correct. And that is so, that is why we need to borrow money. That's correct. Yeah. Because of that EPA, um, they take a percentage monthly um, off of what we should receive as, as a means to meet the state's own obligations. Mm -hmm. So they give it to us in June in one lump sum, that 9.6. However, those little beats, bits and pieces, month to month to month, grow. causes a shortfall of in, in excess of $4 million or okay. $4 million in our May. Um, and is that done to every single school district? Every school district. Every school district. So when you have school districts that don't need the money because they have other means of... They have large property taxes. Um, and think then they, then they're still f they're fortunate enough to get still the lump sum in June. But not us. Not us. And they don't share with us either. No, it's it's because of uh, the way we're funded. Our, the majority of our funds, 92%, come from the state and not property taxes. So... Mm -hmm. Um, that's the way our cookie crumbles. So, yeah. Okay. Ms. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Nothing. He asked no questions. Thank you. Ms. Zunovizcar. Thank you. Well, I have a I have a question. It was you. I uh, think you uh, skipped me. No, actually, you spoke first. But go ahead. Yes, but uh, when I'm li when I'm listening to another page, and then you tell you go to the other person. Well, the reduction well, expenditure. Two thousand thirteen and uh, second year adjustments. Mm -hmm. the, uh, we have uh, unrestricted restrict have increased the three point million dollar from first year. Mm -hmm. Yes. That our expenditure I think is more than that. The so where is the encouragement of the lawyer consulting about three point seven million dollars more? No, that's that's not where the um, okay. increases come from. Yes, so the in totally. reports, in order reports, we're gonna spend uh, our originally the budget is three point seven million dollars. 
and false engineering we approved us fifty five point three million dollars. Now the our second engineering in report is seven point four million dollars we're gonna spend lawyer and consulting. Our revenue seventy six million dollars and we're gonna spend seven point four million dollars lawyer and consulting almost ten percent of our revenue we're gonna spend lawyer and consulting. Well oh, why um, we need employees? Well, a lot of just and just to be clear, um, that's unrestricted and restricted. Yes, and I understand I, that. And as a part of that, which is noted on the PowerPoint, mm -hmm. um, that's where we budget the one for, of that one point two million dollars is for continuing um, facilities. We don't know where we're going or who the vendors are, and that's how we pay co contractors and contracted services is through the fifty eight hundreds, which is consulting consulting. Um, services and other operating expenditures so that's a large chunk of that has to do with that one point um, almost 1.6 million dollars of FEMA and Calima funds no it's it's uh, the lawyer consulting itself 2.1 million dollars increase from the first uh, second in, uh, first in, in, in order. that's that's not what my report says mr. Kim it says consulting and oh. operating services oh you want to see the black and white I maybe? have it I have it here and we can look on page 7 of form 01 yeah, page seven. Right. Okay. The and we can look at the columns that are board operated, excuse me, board approved operating budget. That is our first interim budget. Uh -huh. And then five you can look. 5.27. Right. And then okay. you can look at the projected year totals, which is our second interim projection. Mm -hmm. And if we look down um, towards the bottom of the page in the 5,000 object codes, well, you can. Wait the a minute. Here, the lawyer consulting, 5,800. 5, the like what you said original budget 3.7 million dollars right that was an and adopted uh, that budget was the board approved the 14 in a rim 5.27 and uh, our project year total the, the second year which is 7.458 that is correct so even the in compared on second uh, thing to uh, first in your report we're going to increase the 2.2 million dollars more that and is there's correct. nothing in the in the your powerpoint project Pub, uh, presentation not showing up. It okay. is. It says right here, unrestricted and restricted have mm -hmm. increased by $3.6 million from first interim. And okay. these are some of the reasons why in expenditures. Okay, I have a so request. Excuse me, Mr. Kim. I have a request I'm, from I'm the public. Well, you know what? You had two times to speak. So I'd like to have Ms. Harvey come up. She asked for the opportunity <laughs> to speak to item G4. Thank you, Ms. Harvey. I want to turn. I'm Diana Harvey, representing ACT. Um, the um, the consultant fees and the budgeting, and we we knew back in September that we might need a TRAN loan. I, I don't remember this being discussed, although I know we've applied for TRAN loans many different times, and one year we didn't even use it. Isn't that right? We, that we didn't. We bar We got the paperwork ready, and then we found out. Oops, we don't need it, so we didn't borrow. Um, I'm really concerned about that cost and that um, item, and I should have spoken during that, but it's kind of tied into what Mr. Kim is asking about right now, too, about the consultant fees. The consultant fees, um, when you spoke earlier, you said, well, Jaffrey charged more, $4,000 more than C uh, CFW charges. Well, is there a third company out there that might even charge less? That's what I'd like to know before you move on that TRAN loan. And rethink it a little bit more because you didn't go out to bid for it obviously because you had a contract but the contract really says and I just showed it to Miss Una a minute ago because I was here at the meeting that they'll look in they were going to look into a 2014 general obligation bond they were going to look at the pool financing and some other state aid eligibility I don't remember tran loan it's not listed as an item on their contract so I don't know how that ties into being part of their obligation to our district with their contract that they have now. But still, even if they have a contract for something, this is something new, a TRAN loan. And why, wh why don't we go out and say, okay, somebody else give us a bid for a TRAN loan rather than that company? And, you know, it's, it's 10000 for the interest. Is that budgeted? It's $15,000 for their fee, but they already have a contract. So I wasn't sure if that contract that they have that we're paying them for 
includes that $15,000 fee that they're going to get, plus a $5,800 fee to write our credit report, our credit rating. So is that budgeted? And is that, I didn't see it listed up there. Um, when we went into um, the first interim report, and I was here, I don't, we listed ourselves as positive, positive, positive for the budget. And now we're positive, 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 but short cash. So um, I, I just think that some more thought needs to be given to that trend loan before you approve, and well, you already approved it, but you still can rethink it. You can come back with anything on your agenda and do it again. I mean, it's been done before. But uh, the consultant fees, I think we need to watch them, and Mr. Kim is bringing up that point, and I wanted to make my point. In, and uh, my segue was the consultant fee back to the TRAN loan. And no, I know nobody's going to answer my question. That's okay. But I don't ever remember the TRAN loan being discussed back in um, December when you did the first interim. Mm -hmm. This is the second interim. Or is this the third? The second. Yeah, okay. Yeah, we're positive. Yeah. Okay, thank, thank you. That's uh, that's a th that's a the what's called the expenditure it doesn't show up with the number, three point six million dollars, from the Loyan Consulting two point two million dollars, and they have a budget program improvement funds one point two, that only came out to the point four million dollars, so only point two million dollars they're gonna be re-employment staff, and the additional assignment additional hours and the statutory benefit, and the equipment equipment process district wide. And it's going to be insurance premiums going to be increased. It's covered by only 0.2 million dollars. Cover all those. It doesn't show up the number. <coughs> this number is not right. About our expenditure crazy increase it. I'd Probably like to call the other for the question. Secretaries, maybe, uh, maybe uh, they're not spending much. I'd like much. to call That's for the covered. question. Is there a second to the call? Is there a motion to approve the interim report? Don't, don't we have to vote? Bo yes, call for question. We have to we vote. All those in favor for the call for the question signify by saying aye. No. Aye. Aye. Motion passes 4 1. You see, like they don't want to know. Is there a motion to approve the 2012 13 second interim report? Motion to approve. Motion by Duarte. Is there a second? Second by Calderon. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. No. Aye. Motion passes 4 1. Board's members closing comments. Mr. Kim. My closing, com uh, closing comment is very simple. Our lazy board members, they don't think about the, that uh, they don't want to hear it. They don't want to see things like this. That we are the, we are the one the dealing with our children's money, not, my, not ours money. If their own pocket money would be deal better than this. Because this, we are going to spend a lot of money in without knowingly, and we not care for our spending. We lost the care program. I was, uh, last year I was uh, mentioning, and we, they didn't listen. This is one of the examples. You still have time, Mr. Kim. That's okay. Thank you. Mr. Calderon. Real quick. Um, can you read me the first words that he said about board members? I believe the term was lazy board members. Yes, correct. Okay, be careful with your words. Doesn't I'm matter. It's right my now. opinion. Mr. Calderon, I'm Mr. Kim, right now. limit. Okay, it's, not my, it's my opinion. Um, we need to be careful. We need to be careful with... Uh, expenditures. I don't like the fact that uh, money is just being put here and there, that we're just trying to sway money from here to there. And I'm saying from one interim report, we have money here. And if that's, a, if that's the truth, then we put money somewhere else. I don't like that, okay? Uh, if that is in, in fact true, okay? Uh, I've said it before, and I'm gonna say it again. I we do need a lawyer, uh, mm -hmm. but consulting fees, 
I don't, I don't, I don't like it. Do we need them for some things? Maybe, but we don't. We shouldn't. We be wasting all that much money on consulting uh, firms. If we have another source of or another <laughs> pool of consulting fees, why don't we do? Why don't we call out for bids? Okay, I just just because we have a contract with our company, well, let's we look at that contract. And if it's that, if in, if indeed we don't need to do this, or we don't need, we we if we don't need to um, do contracts with certain companies, or if we want to go, let me re retract that. If we want to just get bids out of uh, uh, a pool of consulting firms, let's do that. Okay. Once again, I don't, I don't, I don't like this. Uh, just because they're being here and that we're gonna do business with them, no, let's do it fair, okay? Because fifteen thousand here, twenty thousand over there, it ad it adds up, and I don't like it. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Duarte. Um, I just have. Uh, I've been receiving calls in regards to um, some leaks at some school sites. And um, there has been no report from the school site to MNO. Um, so the, the calls, I directed them to the grounds supervisor and uh, not, not directed, leaks, water leaks. Not directed them, but it was, it was talk, <laughs> conversation. And so they were checked out, but um, we do have a uh, school dude, I believe, that needs to be, I mean, if, if, and this is partly for the administrators that are present, if there is something in your school, please report it on a timely fashion because then we sit here and we hear community parents and stuff saying that we don't take, this board does not take care of the schools. If we, if the proper chain of command is not informed, there is nothing we can do until the school it, the, the school sets it off. So um, there is a program that the clerical staff have to report these <coughs> things, and please report them in a timely manner. We always get, um, I know Dr. Asiat was here earlier. Um, uh, we always get com um, comments made by him and by other members that we have floods and leaks and stuff. But then, you know, they're not reported to the proper department. So let's let's go ahead and uh, be more vigilant of these things, especially when it comes to water and light. We pay excessively on those, and Mr. Kim is right. We 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 don't take care of our money, and it's not this board, n not only this board, but everybody, every staff. I still see uh, personnel. In, in in school sites at 10 o'clock with the lights on. And I, I mean, I, I understand that a lot of people stay over working hours, but you know, make sure that the lights are off at night. Make sure that whatever electricals can be turned off, turn them off. Water, any leaks or anything. Um, we, we also need that assistance from staff too in order to save money. It's not just coming from this board. All we do is approve or disapprove. And, um, but it takes the full uh, staff to, to implement these savings. And um, also, um, it's disheartening when you have parents come to us and complaints or issues uh, like the one that we had earlier with the parent come up and they're not either being taken care of or they're not, those are things that have to be responded in an expedite manner. And if we're not looking for them in an expedite manner, we can get into, a, into big problems, you know. So let's, let's be more vigilant of what's going on and um, take care of issues right away. Thank you. Thank you. Ms. Zunovizcarna. Thank you. I um, just wanted to update everyone. I've actually received um, the last couple of weeks several calls um, from parents, which I, I appreciate it. And uh, I want to share with everyone some of the things that um, some of the parents are sharing with me. And, and I and I concur. Having children as well in, the, in this district, in an elementary school, in a junior high school, and in high school, they're they're all over the map. So I 
not only get their perspective, so what I would want for them as a parent, I'm hearing from other parents as, as well, so I'm t in a big degree very privy to be in this position and, and get to hear from my peers, from parents, and, I, and I'll tell you most of the comments that I've heard have been about what is available or really what parents feel is the unavailability of programs or, or activities and things that they'd like their kids to take part in. And, and I believe, um, and I don't want to misquote, I think Mr. Ureña had mentioned at some point, he said, well, school is just, we're, we're focused on tests and we're focused on, on these examinations. That's kind of it. So maybe it's become a little boring and a little tedious and other things seem to then just not be as, as relevant. And I'm really keen on kids participating in physical education and activities that really broaden their, their ability to absorb a lot of a lot more information when they're in the classroom. In addition to that though, so what the parents have been have been talking to me about are just programs when they set up we want our kids to do something fun and I said, well what is what is fun for, for your child? And they've talked about the food program, the food services that, that that they receive. They've talked about I actually had parents say I I wouldn't mind my kid being in school more hours. I don't know how the teachers would feel about that, but that's what parents are telling me. <laughs> They'd want their kids to be in school. I'll leave my kids there till six if you guys will take them. <laughs> but, um, I think six is too long. No, is that too much? Well, not for me. Um, <laughs> or three. <laughs> but they, they, they want more than um, I think what, what, they, what they feel they're getting. And, I, and really some parents actually said, and, and what is there for, for us? So I think parent support. So anyways, what I'm really looking forward to is the retreat that we're talking about because one of the, one of the many things that I hope we, we talk about there are budgets and how we save money, but how we align all the things that we want so that we're getting what we want with the money that we have and, and then we can save money on things that we seem to just kind of be patching things up a lot uh, on this board at least at least in my time here we're patching stuff and paying for things here and there and Bless it's 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 frightening at times because this is money that should be going for those those calls that i'm getting those parents that are calling and wanting these things and i'd like to see us um develop a new plan again with this new board that's here that um that makes sense to all of us that we all have information that um, what I hear a lot as well, the, or, the old board had information or had presentations, that we get that um, as, as a new board. So we're all on the same page, that we're all following the same um, vision. Thank you. Thank you. I'd like to um, ask that when we, we, we go into that retreat that we be, that this board be provided a copy of and so that we can review our goals and objectives and what has what has been done towards achieving that? Um, you know, particularly, any notes and and uh, goals that were set at the last retreat. I would like to also ask um, the board to do their due diligence in in terms of uh, getting information, asking for information prior to to the board meeting, so you come prepared to make a decision rather than asking for questions. Uh, that could be taken care of prior to to the board meeting so that we can expedite our uh, meetings and do the the work that we're we're elected to do um, the other thing I'd like to ask is that uh, we all uh, continue to respect show respect for our staff and each other um, finally the third thing I'd like to point out is that um, and that Ms. Donaldson mentioned there's a flexibility in terms of, of the funding, but there also with that it comes with a responsibility to informing our our campus community and our on our par parents and our extended community. Um, and uh, that's it. I've got some people that asked to speak to closed session. Do I we have that before we go to the announcement of closed session, Maria? So at this time, um, Chris, where's Chris? Oh, there you are. You, uh, item J1, <coughs> De La Rosa. Hi, uh, good evening board, I'm administration. Um, Chris De La Rosa, I'm CSEA, I'm chief negotiator, current chief negotiator. Um, 
earlier you guys took action in regards to the new job description and the position at the FRC. And um, I don't blame Mr. Calderon or Ms. Vizcarra, even Ms. Duarte's um, comments and uh, concerns that they had in regards to wanting more information. I agree completely with you that, that um, information is needed. And when we bring these things to the board, they need to be fully informed in regards to what the merit of such a reclassification was and and how the employee earned through mer you know how they merited the reclassification and the job the job um, duties that they um, in, have occur of um, have that they have increased for the em employee and um, regardless if you approve or not those duties are still going to be there Okay, um, now the Personnel Commission took action last week, I believe, or the week before, and um, and that was part of the action they took that was presented to you for ratification. Um, definitely the concerns valid, the information definitely needed. Um, the reclassifi reclassification definitely approved by the Personnel Commission. In closed session, you're supposed to ratify it. Okay, um, we're unique here in the di in the valley, as compared to other districts where we are a merit district, where we have the personnel commission that that investigates. And, and I'll be honest with you, the personnel commission right now runs beautifully. And that's not because she here. Uh, not because Esther Miss Martinez is sitting back there but because they're very thorough, very professional, and they're not afraid to consult their legal legal um, advisors as to what uh, actions they can and cannot approve or support. Um, just when you go in closed session, it might be a moot point in closed session because the item was tabled, especially the job description. You can't put the horse before the carriage, right? Even though we want to do it in the same night. But um, my recommendation to you and and a plea from CSEA is get your information. Please, administration, provide information to the board members as requested. Give them the, the history, and that way you guys can bring it back to the table as the motion maker to table it. You can make a motion, bring it back to the table if you wish, and um, that way you guys can take action accordingly. But please don't, don't delay and try to get it by the next meeting, I hope so that um, this can be implemented as soon as possible because we have a, a binding action from the personnel commission and, and all we're doing is we're just piling up the bill because the increase in pay, it's gonna happen. Um, it's just the job description you guys can, can um, get all your information you want on that as to what she's gonna do, okay? And why she married it. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Mr. De La Rosa, Mr. Chad Cooper. Items J1, 2, 3. That means I get nine minutes, right? No, just kidding. Um, I wanted to revisit my comments earlier. I want to be specific that um, the current administrations work closely with ACT on a couple things that previous administration had it, and that th those are positive things that should be celebrated. Number one, that or normal, I think, but it's good that we're getting there, okay? The date provider talked to teachers about choosing this external consultant that's got the power to do a lot of help, and I think having ACT leadership there from day one gives it more verification and more power because all ACT members want to do a better job and I believe the date provider will help us do that. Um, so thank you for that. Number two is uh, you've had a couple teacher interview panels and uh, previous administrator didn't allow teachers to be on the teacher interview panels, which I thought was odd, or at least in isolated cases that I was aware of. And currently we're working in collaboration on choosing our colleagues who fits best in your department might be a good question of your department members, um, for example. but. What I'm talking about is calendaring my concern where we used to work closely and we're not. I'm hoping this can get fixed when you hire the six-figure HR administrator, right? 
but the superintendent's still going to be supervising that person, and the school board's still in charge of that. So, um, calendaring grievances at the school board level really should be done through the school board president with the assistance of the superintendent. And I've ran into a brick wall. I talked to your lawyer tonight about trying to improve that process, but again, it used to be something that we were able to do, and I really feel like we were had a plan to hear a grievance in mid-March. Mid-March is passing, and I still don't have a firm answer. I know superintendent was out of town. There's other big matters I know that's dealing with, but people that are having grievances have a right to have them heard. So school board, I, I hope that when they get to your level that you make those a priority and that you check in with the superintendent and maybe free up time for her to be able to do that. So I just wanted to provide more clarity in uh, areas that, you know, hiccups that we've ran into lately. I've got three, four, well, actually three specific grievances that are ready for the school board level. So I, I'd like to calendar them, and I, I need to know about them before the agenda is published. Now, the agenda was published with one on there. The Mr. Weiler called me um, and clarified that, and I understand now that he's, you know, going to, hold off on that level three grievance till we're ready. But uh, again, I'm looking to calendar these grievances and get a expedited response if there is such a thing. So anyways, I hope I'm clear. Thank you. Thank you. Announcement of convening into closed session regarding of items referenced below for closed session. Mr. Weiler. Oh, well, that's it? Yes. Okay. We will by, now the, by the Brown Act, it has to be verbally announced to the public. Uh, I, think I think she just did, but for the sake of Mr. Kim, uh, the board is now going to convene in closed session, as indicated uh, in item I, to discuss and act upon the items in J in the agenda. Thank you, Mr. Weiler. We'll now convenient go into closed session at uh, 855 54. Okay well we will uh, reconvene from closed session at 1057. Mr. Weiler, um, or Ms. Ambrose. Actually, before you move forward, can I ask for a motion to extend the meeting by 15 minutes so that we don't have to interrupt ourselves in the middle of it? Motion. Motion by Ms. Dorothy. Is there a second? Second. Second by Mr. Mr. Kim. Thank you. Is there all those in favor signify by saying aye? Aye. 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 Motion passes unanimously. Ms. Amadis, please go ahead. Okay. Uh, <coughs> there were uh, two actions taken in closed session. Uh, the first one uh, on a motion by Ms. Uh, Ruth Duarte uh, and a second by Mr. Kim to uh, accept a letter of employee number 3024 to uh, be uh, reassigned to Calexico High School as assistant principal and it was a unanimous decision to approve that request and the second item the second action was um, this evening in closed session the board voted as follows uh, employee number 3724 shall be released from the certificated administrative position of assistant principal, effective June 30th, 2013. The superintendent or designee shall provide the employee with written no uh, notice pursuant to Education Code Section 44951. And uh, I believe it was a motion uh, by uh, Mrs. Duarte. Oh, I'm sorry, by Mr. Calderon. And it was second by Mr. Kim. And uh, Board members voting to approve that um, motion were Trustee Kim, Trustee Calderon, Trustee Duarte, 
Trustee Zuno Vizcarra and Trustee Aguilar. And that is it. We motion to extend. Oh, the sorry. There was a motion to extend the meeting. Thank you. Mr. Weather? No, good. Okay, so we'll go on to the certificated employment report. Um, there were, is there a motion? I'd like to make a motion to um, approve, to table temporary contract and bring it back to the next board meeting and and uh, approve the rest second. motion by Aguilar second by Duarte all those in favor signify by saying aye aye, aye. mr. Kim hi Ms. Zuno Vizcarra aye aye motion passes 5-0 Classified employment report for the Board of Education. Um, do I have a motion? I make a motion to pull table. Oh, ta I'm sorry, table number one. Did I clean it? Can you? Oh, number one and number four. What? All of number one or just part of number one? Oh, just, just part of number one. I think you mean the extra hours yeah, for. No, no, for number four, it would just be the extra hours for mm -hmm. the ASA software program. And approve the rest? Approve the rest, yes. Okay, so the motion is to, uh, to table item one uh, under, under item one, Maria Bravo classified um, reclassification. Yes. And uh, to table the extra hours for the ACES supper program. Yes. And approve all others. Approve the rest. All the rest. Is there a second? Motion by Mr. Calderon, is there a second? I second. Second by Duarte. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 No. Motion passes for one. And I believe we're done. Meeting adjourned.